Hello there, you welcome to the only show that brings you happenings in the world of diplomacy and international relations, diplomatic affairs. My name is Harriet Nati. The show comes off every Saturday between the hours of 4 to 5 o'clock p.m. on Pan-African Television. We are also broadcasting on YouTube and Facebook, wherever you find yourself in the world. Like I always say, you can catch up with us and get to learn what is happening in Ghana's diplomatic circles and the rest of the world to start um today's episode we have a lot of interesting stories and i know you wouldn't want to miss out on these stories so i begin by giving you the headlines then we will come back um, for the details now the ministry of foreign affairs and regional integration has launched the third made in ghana bazaar and also european union delegation in ghana joins the eu in marking EU Day with series of activities as part of strengthening EU-Ghana relations. We also have Russia moves the nuclear project in Sierra Leone and Turkey suspending all ties, trade ties with Israel over its offensive in Gaza. I will be back with all the details in a bit. Welcome back. The show is Diplomatic Affairs. My name is Harriet Nati. Now to our first story. Let's talk about the third Made in Ghana Bazaar organized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. Now as part of efforts to promote Ghana's economic diplomacy, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration has launched the third Made in Ghana Bazaar under the theme Promoting Made in Ghana Goods and Services for Economic Prosperity, which will take place from the 23rd to the 25th of May 2024 at the Accra International Conference Center. Now, delivering a speech, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Honorable Shelley Ayoko Butri, recalled that the event, which is a flagship program of the ministry, was launched in 2018 following government's decision to re establish the Economic Trade and Investments Bureau, active of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in. 2017 in pursuance to its economic and transformation agenda. The bazaar has been strategically designed to harness the efforts of our micro, small, and medium businesses and to promote their products and services globally through our diplomatic missions abroad. It may be noted that the second edition of the Made in Ghana Bazaar was held in July 2019. However, due to circumstances beyond the ministry's control, including COVID, the event has stalled for the past three years. Thankfully, the third edition of the Made in Ghana Bazaar is coming off at the Accra International Conference Center from the 23rd to 25th of May under the theme promoting Made in Ghana goods and services for economic prosperity. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to emphasize that the overarching objective of the bazaar is to use the network of our diplomatic missions abroad and diplomatic missions accredited to the Republic of Ghana to facilitate the penetration of Ghanaian products and services into foreign markets. The bazaar also creates a needed platform to build strong relationships between Ghana's local industries and the well-established markets of our foreign partners abroad. It also aims to re-echo the need to patronize made in Ghana goods and services while improving on the production, processing, packaging, and distribution chain. The third edition of the bazaar would provide exhibitors with an opportunity to showcase a wide range of innovative products and services, as well as to establish contacts with strategic partners, exchange experiences, explore business opportunities, and to consolidate relationships with new and existing customers. I declare the 2024 Bazaar officially launched, and I cordially invite you all to fully participate in this year's Bazaar. To get the exports promoted, we need to ensure that we have a broader base of products, enhance the quality of same, and then of course diversify markets. We do this and do it very well with the support of the Ministry of 
foreign affairs under the tutelage of and under the tutelage of our mother ministry, the Ministry of Trade and Industry. One thing which is not too open to the public is that which is called Permanent Joint Commission for Cooperation. The GPA is always part of this, and this is an avenue really for opening markets for wonderful businessmen here in Gadded. The GPA participates in this strongly with all the strength that we can master to ensure that we indeed provide service and not disservice to our constituents who are the um, exporters. At the Ghana Free Zones Authority, we are proud to support and promote local industries and entrepreneurship. The Made in Ghana Bazaar is a remarkable platform that showcases the diversity and quality of products made right here in our beloved country. This initiative not only celebrates the creativity and innovation of our local artisans and businesses, but also underlines our commitment to foster economic growth and development within Ghana. This economic strength relies on a vibrant domestic market fueled by innovative and competitive local businesses. The Made in Ghana Bazaar provides a platform for these businesses to showcase their capabilities and connect with the wider audience. We recognize the crucial role that locally made goods and services play in advancing Ghana's economy and by creating employment opportunities and, sustain, and supporting sustainable development. Our mission and our aim as a business association is to promote and protect the interests of all businesses in Ghana and outside Ghana. We want to assure the members who will be participating in this event that we are bringing on board over 8,000 members of the chamber to promote Made in Ghana goods and services outside Ghana. Hello there, you're welcome to the only show that brings you happiness in the world of diplomacy and international relations. My name is Harriet Nati, of course, the show is Diplomatic Affairs. We are coming to you from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. It's all about the third edition of the Made in Ghana Bazaar, you know, which started in 2018. And we have had the privilege of following through and through. We're excited after. After COVID, here we are once again trying to revive this initiative, which we will be talking about extensively because it is all about economic diplomacy when it comes to Ghana's exchanges with the rest of the world. We are talking about promoting made in Ghana businesses and we are talking about crossing borders, which is key. I am very excited to be surrounded by all females. Yes, it doesn't really happen. So this is women empowerment. <laughs> right, so I'm going to let them introduce themselves, we'll delve into their businesses and get to know really what the expectations are. Let me start from my right. Hello there. Hi, I'm Christiana Brove. I'm into the production of yam, yam crepes and cereals. So the cereals, I have Tom Brown, I have Oblayo, which is the coarse corn grits, and then a quick baby, which is corn grits. Oh, nice. Thank you. Hello, my name is Faith Sogbe. Um, my company name is Faith Ventures. We are into many things, but more of um, fashion, which is um, we do clothing, we do batik and tie and dyes, we do agbada, kaftans, shirts, etc. Um, we are here in Accra, Spinters, that's where we base. And also, we are here to promote the bazaar. Yeah, made in Ghana bazaar. Yeah, we are expecting the whole world to come. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now Gifty. My name is Gifty, Gifty Fianu. Okay, we'll leave it there. Um, I'm into car batteries. Auto car batteries. My batteries is from Kenya. And uh, I'm the general secretary of Abosukai Spare Part Dealers Association. And it's all about bazaar. Yeah, it's all about <laughs> promoting made in Ghana. Hello. Hello. Right, this is for you. Okay. 
So I'm Nana, I'm an Angie Dakwa, and I'm into natural skincare. So our main focus is face care. So anything for your face, anything anti-aging, contact me. <laughs> You're not going to bleach. You just look natural, glowing, sexy, Ooh. and flawless. <laughs> Thank you. And the company name is Celio. It's a French word. C apostrophe E L I O R E. Celio. Okay. Hello, I'm Gifty Nancy. My company's name is Fama Kente. We deal in um, Kente as well as ready to wear products like um, for men and for women as well. We are located on the Spintex Road and for anything corporate wear, everything we do, you can get us here. Yeah. Well, the third Made in Ghana Bazaar is on, which is starting, I think, on the 20th. 3rd to the 25th so it's a two-day affair and we will be talking about made in strictly made in ghana products and services i'm excited once again to meet all these wonderful industrious women now let's delve into the expectations most of them are going to be participating in this event for the very first time so i would like us to delve into their businesses what the expectations are after they've mentioned what they are into cosmetics we have car batteries we have apparel we have food we have yeah i love food a quick baby I love it. Yes. And when it comes to apparel, I love beautiful clothes. So, yes, I'm so much into it. And cosmetologists, I love them because they make our skins look beautiful. So, cosmetics and everything. And so, car batteries, this is very rare. To have a woman run this space is very rare. Um, I want to know, um, which of you have ever participated in the first and the second bazaar? before anyone from here so all of you this is going to be your first time participating in this let's talk about your expectations well being being a first time i hope the program goes well and also i hope that people would see what we have as Ghanaians and also africa in like in in a whole as africa as a whole and also i hope that if people have concerns, instead of them spreading the negativity around, they should contact us. Because some of us, we are entrepreneurs, like first-time entrepreneurs. Some of us, you know, are starting, uh, some of us are starting small, and we hope to be here, you know. We hope to go international. So we hope that the feedback, whether positive or negative, I mean, you will let us know, rather than going out and then spreading it, let, yeah. And we also hope that you all come in your numbers. You know, let's come wear Ghana, eat Ghana, enjoy Ghana. If you're there, I mean, there's no place like home. So let's come and then have fun. You know, there'll be music, food, apparel to wear, networking. Yeah, which is most, which is the most important thing. So let's come in our numbers and God bless you. <laughs> Please. So networking. This is your first time as well. Yes. Okay. What are you hoping to see? I'm hoping to see uh, Ghanaians coming out to patronize us. I'm hoping to see um, the whole world <laughs> coming out like to know what we Ghanaians we can do, we the entrepreneurs we can do. We are active. So we want them to come forward and encourage us to do more. Yeah, that's uh, that's what we are mm, to, to do more. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to Gifty. Gifty, car battery. I mean, maybe something so bad. Yeah, how many of us in the car battery industry? No, but I mean, touch all car battery. You can want some more. Yeah, I mean, port car batteries from ABM Kenya, mm -hmm. and I've been doing this for almost four years now. Four years. Yes, and. One of the few women who do this, we are about two or three. The rest are foreigners. <laughs> One of the few women who do this, we are just about two or three, the whole country. And the rest are foreigners. Car batteries, you know, without your battery, you cannot move. And this is uh, something that I enjoy doing because it's like... Um, how to go about the whole thing, important men coming to you, mm -hmm. explain you so that you explain mm -hmm. things to them. And then also, I wish, I hope to get more companies to 
supply to them because I have all range from the smallest to the biggest. The, the generators, the um, machines, any, every battery, I have it. So I'm looking forward to supply to big, big companies and individuals. Wow. <laughs> And we need your support. You have to patronize Made in Ghana products and services. We have these great women who are doing so much when it comes to entrepreneurship. And we are talking about batteries. How many women? I'm told three. You know, in the whole of this country, we have just three women driving um, um, when it comes to batteries here in the country. So I'm excited about that one as well. Now, let's continue. It is your first time as well. What are your expectations? Looking forward to network, meet more people, uh -huh. and probably these beautiful, women. these beautiful women, their entrepreneurship passion, like the car battery lady. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> she's driving me already. <laughs> so to learn more from the people who have been in the industry way before us, and then get feedback to improve our businesses. Okay, that's great. Now let's come to you and talk about you. With a touch of a beautiful Kente. Yeah, nice combination. Thank you. Can I get one? So you can get one from me, from a Kente. We, well, I do have an Ina, so I don't mind. <laughs> yes, so, but you can get it from me, from a Kente. We are on Instagram, all social media platforms. So, from a Kente, F A M A Kente. On Instagram, social, um, Facebook, um, TikTok, we are there. So in terms of my expectations, I think they've said it all. Um, I'm looking to network. I'm looking for brand exposure and also to put my brand out there to let people know that made in Ghana goods are equally as good as, you know, pro yes, products or international brands too as well. So thank you for the opportunity and we look forward to seeing you all on the 23rd of, of May. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so on the 23rd of May at the is it Accra International Conference Center, we are having the third edition. We'll talk about, I'll come to you. Gifty, you have something to say? Yeah. Talking about women in business, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, it's a good thing because when you come to Abu Sokai, we are about 15,000 to 20,000 people. And the women are few, but the women there, if you see things that they do, it will shock you. Wow. Yes. I am the general secretary for the whole of Sokai, and mainly men, and it's not easy. Running men, I can imagine, oh. <laughs> We all can imagine. But yes, on this note, this is where we wrap up. Um, it's been great coming to you from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. And it's all about the third Made in Ghana Bazaar, where we will be showcasing Made in Ghana products and services. We need you to be there and we need your support as well. Home support always inspires confidence. And I keep saying this in every field. So we need you to get out of your numbers. We are able to fly out of the country to other places just to be part of exhibitions. Yeah, you crew. We have to be here. We don't have a choice. We need to be there to support these amazing women who are doing so much, you know, in different businesses. And also to support the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, plus, you know, um, their stakeholders for once again doing this. And so it's been great. It hasn't been easy, but this is a great platform to put our products out there. Like she said, our products are, are as good as the foreign ones, the international ones. I'm rocking this beautiful um, blazer um, with a touch of Ghanaian fabric break and you can see all almost all of them you know even sometimes we make these tops here you don't have to travel out to anywhere to purchase them you can get them right here they are made here and i told someone the other time that wearing it is not only african prints that are made here in ghana these days we make you know designs from so many other fabrics so they are all sewn and designed here so i like what she's wearing i like what each and every one of us you know here is wearing and i want us to also come out in our numbers and support this great initiative Ladies, um, I wish you all the best of luck. We will be there. It's a promise. We will be there to support you. Away from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, let's talk about the European Union. Now, the 9th of May each year symbolizes EU Day, which commemorates the signing of the Schuman Declaration on May 9, 1950. The day marks the anniversary of the historic Schuman Declaration that set out his idea for a new form of political cooperation in Europe, which would see Europe unite and promote a common interest rather than the things that 
divided them. The High Representative of the European Union Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Joseph Borrell, has delivered a message on peace in marking the day. On Europe Day, we commemorate a visionary moment in the history. It was in May 1950 when Robert Schuman laid the foundation for what today we know as the European Union. In the decades that followed this day, Europe became a beacon of peace. However, two years ago, Russia brought high-intensity war back to the European borders. Since 2022, the Ukrainian people have been fighting for their very existence, their freedom, and their culture. And the European Union has been steadfastly supporting them, and we will continue doing that. On the other hand, in the Middle East, another war is raging. And unhappily, again, we are at risk of further escalation, and the war could embrace the whole region. But we must not allow attention shifting away from the inhuman suffering of the people in Gaza, nor from the pain of the Israeli hostages and their families. This fighting must stop. The suffering must end. And a political process must start to implement the two-state solution. And it has to happen now because we have been talking about it for years and years without really engaging seriously on making that a reality. Europeans are active all over the world, trying to alleviate suffering and trying to work for peace, providing humanitarian assistance wherever needed, and working with our global partners, trying to look for stability, security, and development, for freedom, prosperity, and social cohesion. We are also building global partnerships to fight climate change, one of the biggest existential threats to the humankind. Yes, this is one of the existential issues for humanity that demands sustainable solutions and global cooperation at a time where the world becomes more and more confrontational. We see more confrontation and less cooperation. That's why the European Union wants to remain a steadfast advocate for a fair and effective multilateral system, ready to shape a just and fair future for all. It was 74 years ago. After the Schuman Declaration, the message of former enemies can make peace and build a better future is no less relevant, but the contrary is becoming more and more relevant to show how it is possible that the people who were fighting against each other for years became not only good neighbors, but the best friends. That's a good example. Europe doesn't want to lecture anyone, but we want to show what we have been able to do, standing for peace, for human rights and solidarity, starting at home and trying to support everybody around the world. Happy Europe Day. Now let's move from Brussels and come to Ghana. Here in Ghana, the European Union delegation under the head of mission, Ichad Ramian Draswa Razali, has lined up so many activities in commemorating the EU Day. First was the Diplo Rumble event. Yes, now the Bukom Boxing Arena here in Accra hosted the historic Rumble ever to take place on the soil. Ever to take place on the soil. Head of mission of the EU in Ghana, Ambassador Ichad Ramiandra Sarazali, took on Ghana's former professional boxer, Azuma Nelson, in a bout to exhibit his boxing prowess. The exhibition was also aimed at empowering the Ghanaian youth and promoting Ghana's sports and industry with a focus on boxing. The main event was preceded by several bouts from young boxers who displayed their skills in the boxing ring. The ninth ended with the Diplo Rumble fight being a draw. Now I'm going to take you to the Bukum Boxing Arena where all the anticipation happened and it was such a delight to watch these two um, take each other on.
I would like to thank my colleagues, ambassadors, members of the diplomatic corps who took the pain to come here today. I hope to support me. But first and foremost, first and foremost to witness the energy and the power of boxing to bring and to build bridges bridges between people of Europe and people of Ghana, the power of boxing, to pay tribute to the professor Azuma Nelson, and to demonstrate that the European Union is not something far away. The European Union is close to you. We are fighting with you, but we are brothers.
Entertainment and night of everything sports diplomacy. After 16 years, Ghana's legend, the living legend, the Azuma Nelson, Zoom Zoom, one of Africa's very best, you know, just mounted the platform, entered the ring, and you know, took a bout with the EU ambassador to Ghana, Richard Razali. It's been a night of bliss, a night of fun. Harriet, we, Harriet, we've been we've been here for like three, four hours. Did you have fun? Well, I did. I did. I, did. I had so much fun. Um, I hardly or rarely do this. And so I am so happy to be part of the crowd here. I mean, when it started, we didn't anticipate this number. But, um, you know, as time goes by, we started seeing a lot of people coming in and all of that. So it's been great. Like Azuma Nelson intimated, um, he's not done this um, for the past 16 good years. So you can imagine if you were born in which year, calculating from that year till date, it means that you have never seen or you hadn't seen him in action until today, right? So this means a lot. First of all, let's talk about what this means for us when it comes to um, relations between the EU and Ghana. It tells you how deep relations are or how intense relations are when it comes to the EU and Ghana. The EU is one of the key partners when it comes to Ghana's development agenda. Richard Razali, um, that from day one, 
Yeah. Since he so, got into the country, he's been all about pushing a particular agenda, a transformational agenda, which is to see Ghana also develop in some key areas. We do a lot of things with the European Union, as you know. We do a lot of things on climate change, sustainability, um, a lot of green initiatives. And so for us to be here, it tells you that diplomacy is the, is the ultimate um, go to place when it comes to getting things done between countries and for us we are very much excited so this has been good also the people in this community will appreciate what diplomacy is all about sometimes they feel like they are very far away from the mission and you had the eu ambassador to ghana mentioned in his remarks that you know what the eu is closer to you than you think it's a bridge builder and it is here for the people. The people must, must feel the presence of the European Union. And that's what it is about, you know. So I think it's been a great night, like you said, and we've had so much fun. The takeaway for me is, you know, we're trying to now um, 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 elevate the interest of other sports disciplines in the country. For the past years, it's only about football, football, football. But I think the recent um, All-African Games made Ghanaians know that, look, we could also win in other areas. And tonight, I don't know if you witnessed the two young guys who mounted the ring. And then, I mean, it was, it was so fun. It was, and this to tell us that, look, not, not all boxers are meant to be cobolos. Usually, when we are growing up, you hear, oh, no, you can't be a boxer. It's meant for exactly. perception. That's a perception out there. That's a perception out there. And but I, now, but I think but now we, we're getting to know that, look, look at Zoom Zoom. He's, I mean, he's, he's learned, a learned person and he's done this. He's invested so much exactly. in himself. He's come, you know, he's risen through the ranks to have gotten to where he is today. He's celebrated worldwide. He's a global icon. He, um, he's a legend when, we comes to, when it comes to sports. And he is one of the people who wield a lot of power when it comes to sports. So um, this, he's exemplary. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a leader for us, not just for Ghanaians, but also the world. And so for us to use this medium to project the essence of unity, cooperation, collaboration. I think it's a fantastic idea. We need more of such initiatives. And I want to speak to the African missions here in Ghana as well. I think these are some of the means that we can use to promote and give visibility to um, the African Union, what it stands for. It should be able to serve the needs and, 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 and then, you know, what it is there to do when it comes to the people, you know, on the continent. And then ECOWAS also. We want to feel the presence of these organizations and we want to feel in our own countries and we want to feel the exchanges, you know, um, the cross in, in um, exchanges that happens between us. So for me, I think this is very much of exemplary and we want to see more, like I always say, soft power diplomacy is the way to go Ades. it is the best way to go to let the people know that you are here for them and that you want to work with them and achieve results so it's been a great evening if you ask me what else can we say it's been a night of you know entertainment i mean i've had a very good relaxed evening all thanks to azuma nelson and Ichad razali so from the book unboxing arena we say this is the only show that projects happiness in the world of diplomacy and international relations diplomatic affairs with must they take the initiative of the foreign organizations to let us know that look we can also win people from these areas as an african continent what can we do to push the other sports disciplines on our own continent um, i think it starts from here if european union has seen the essence that we have an earth talent in the areas of boxing and for that matter they can use boxing as a point of entertainment then it is incumbent upon us that we would go harder and harder to train our young talents. The professor himself is an example. So I think it is time for us to sit down and really increase our efforts. To be frank, when you go to Bukom, they are doing all their best to train these kids to come up with this wonderful talent that God has given them. And in Ghana, in most areas, you don't find the kids having that interest. Look at this young kid and the dribblings and the style of fighting that he brought in. I think governments of various African nations, for that matter Ghana, should also look at boxing and look at other talents that we have that are not developed, that we would also strive to develop it. In other nations, they have found 
where they are good at. So we should also find where we can also be good at or where we are good at and try to develop it. And it will help the African continent to also grow and grow well. And there are some things we can be proud of that yes, this is a mark and a hallmark of Africa, a hallmark of Ghana. This Africa, don't try, we will beat it. Africans will take it. The challenges have been lost, there are very many, but uh, all in all, we only played to uh, you know the ministry. In fact, the ministry is doing well. Uh, so far, the Ghana Olympics Committee has also done very well. Uh, still, it's not enough because uh, it is important for us to improve the quality that we have at the moment when we talk of boxing. You may recall, uh, somewhere 2022, we took the team to uh, Birmingham, which is the Commonwealth Games, and Ghana was able to accept uh, by bringing two silver and one bronze. Just recent uh, 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 African Games, you realize that we took uh, four gold, one silver, and two bronze. Even at the World Championship that we went, Ghana has ever gone to the level of, you know, quarter finals. But we were able to do that. It means we are doing very well. So we are saying that if uh, 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 on technical grounds, uh, they are going to, you know, support us financially so that we uplift the, the, the level of uh, 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 knowledge in terms of our technical men, I think it will go a long way for us to bring so much glories into the, into the, into the country. Two, you cannot do boxing if you don't have money. Because boxing, as you see, is a capital intensive. And no, no sports. Go and check records. No sports. Do you understand it? Because it takes so much money for you to do boxing. Do you understand it? So, like I said, boxing is a sport that, as Ghanaians, we must take it serious. Because if you go back to the days of Bazooka, that is, I quote it. You go back to someone else, you saw what he exhibited this evening. Uh, after Cobra Cote, they killed poison and the rest. They did marvelously well for Mother Ghana. They actually brought, you know, Ghana to the world map. That actually led so many investors into our economy. Because Ghana was nowhere. And it was through sports boxing that actually really took, uh, you know, Ghana to, to the world map for investors to actually come to Ghana to invest. So we are seeing it as a game. We are seeing it as a sport. But, you know, we need a lot of people to have the mindset that it is a sport, but it is really having a multiple effect on the economy. Look, today, we can tell you an authority that, as you see, today we have brought the diplomats into our arena for them to observe that in our boxing industry, we are not joking. Because they serve as one of the main stakeholders. We cannot do boxing when we don't have the diplomats to be part of us. Because at the end of the day, what we are doing here, we need to go and rock shoulders outside there. But you cannot just go there if this uh, diplomat, uh, diplomat, don't give you all the necessary visa for you to go. Do you understand? So we need to bring them to a board for them to observe or see exactly what is going on. So that when we engage them, they will not say that maybe we are joking. But really, it is a business that we are doing, like the way they are seeing football. Well, my experience tonight is fantastic. I was so pleased I'm here tonight to watch whatever is going on here. I think um, uh, we should all uh, encourage the young ones. I think it's, it is going to help, it will help the young ones to also, I mean, take I mean, boxing seriously. If only you, um, it is your talent. I think, I think we don't have to force them. But so far as they have the interest to, to do it, I think we should encourage them. Well, we're still talking about the many activities outlined by the European Union here in Ghana, the European Union delegation here in Ghana. And like I mentioned earlier, the first was the Diplo Rumble event. That was the boxing activity, which saw all of us, you know, um, go into the boxing arena, Bukum Boxing Arena, to witness this um, great initiative by the European Union. Um, now, let's also talk about the dialogue that took place between Ghana 
and the European Union. Bilateral ties between the European Union and Ghana have further been strengthened at this year's EU-Ghana Partnership Dialogue held at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. The Partnership Dialogue witnessed discussions in areas such as socio-economic partnership, peace and security, governance and human rights, green growth and sustainability. Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Mohamed Dubaumia, co-chaired the meeting alongside the Foreign Affairs Minister and the European Union Ambassador to Ghana. And the European Union represents an opportunity to bring and the European Union closer by strengthening economic cooperation and promoting sustainable development, peace, security, democracy, prosperity and solidarity amongst others. Building upon the remarkable achievements of last year's session, this meeting marks yet another important milestone in the enduring partnership between Ghana and the EU. And as we convene for this crucial dialogue, it presents not only an opportunity to strengthen bilateral relations, but also a platform for addressing pressing challenges and advancing shared objectives. This annual dialogue is being held within the framework of the cooperation between Ghana and the European Union based on the Lome Convention. Together with the European Union member states, we have maintained fruitful cooperation in all spheres, which, as I have already stated, has continually been strengthened and is evidenced by the signing of many successful partnership agreements. Today's dialogue gives us another opportunity to set the tone for our collective efforts at resolving pending issues towards strengthening Ghana's relations with the European Union, which is our largest multilateral development and trade partner. I urge both sides to work together as strategic partners to objectively assess the progress made so far on the outcome of the previous dialogues to reassess the relations that currently exist between the two sides and determine our joint vision through the thematic areas outlined in the mutually agreed agenda. Strong and arguably is stronger as ever, even amidst today's tasty times, both Europe and Ghana never considered to scale on their commitment. On the contrary, the European Union and its member states expressed a clear appetite to invest more in this partnership. Since our last dialogue, we saw an unprecedented number of high levels. But these developments are not just by chance or coincidence, as the EU and Ghana share a number of priorities and interests. Both Europe and Ghana are today confronted with direct threats to their security and stability, and quoting his Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, security cannot be taken for granted anymore. This is true for Ghana, this is true for Europe as well, for obvious reasons. Secondly, we share a commitment in safe world in democracy and rule of law, both inside our borders, but at global level as well. And we are equally committed to maintaining and reinforcing democracy through and beyond. Right, you're still watching Diplomatic Affairs with me, Harriet Nati. Now, let's take you to the residence of the European Union Ambassador to Ghana, His Excellency Ichad Ramiandra Surazali, um, where he held a reception that saw the entire city get into his house. All roads actually led to the residence of the Ambassador here in Accra. And we were there with our gadgets. Trust us to document all the events. If it did happen, happen we will be there to cover and bring you all the details so the european union in ghana and across the world has observed eu day a day set aside to celebrate peace and unity 
throughout Europe. In Ghana, head of the EU delegation, Ichad Razali, says the EU is committed to the support and empowerment of Ghanaian youth to fulfill their future ambitions. He said youth empowerment remained a priority of the European Union as the organization works with national and international partners to improve the unemployment situation here in Ghana. significant and transformational investment under the brand of Global Gateway. Last year, together with our member states, we have committed to make Ghana one of the few African producing vaccine manufacturing in Africa. This was last year. And this year, a few weeks ago, we have commissioned the largest solar power plant in the Upper West, funded by the Germans, built by the Spanish, commissioned by the President. A last consideration. The European Union believes in Ghana, believes in the future of Ghana, and this is the reason why we are increasing our investment in the youth of the country, training and vocational training, job creation, young entrepreneurship are key area of engagement of the European Union and the member states. The European Union has been a steadfast ally to Ghana, standing by us in times of need and celebrating our successes. Today, as we commemorate the founding principles of the EU and celebrate its achievement, we also celebrate the strength of our partnership. Trade lies at the heart of our partnership, and the Economic Partnership Agreement, the EPA, stands as a testament to our commitment to promoting inclusive and sustainable economic development. This agreement has not only facilitated access to European markets for Ghanaian goods, but also fostered capacity building and investment opportunities.
Moving away from home, let's take you elsewhere, and I'm talking about Sierra Leone's engagement with Russia as they explore relations between the two countries or diplomatic ties between the two countries. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said that Russia and Sierra Leone were mulling cooperation in peaceful nuclear energy, including the possibility of the construction of a nuclear power plant in the West African country. The plan was announced on Tuesday at a news conference in Moscow after Lavrov met his Sierra Leonean counterpart, Timothy Musa Kaba. We have agreed with, and I quote, we have agreed with Mr. Minister that he will formulate additional wishes for Russian investors in various sectors, including in the field of possible cooperation in nuclear energy and peaceful atom outside the energy sector. He said, unquote, we will organize an interdepartmental study. It will not take much time. I think that you will find out about the results soon. Now, the reopening of embassy of Russia also in Sierra Leone. The Russian foreign minister also said that Moscow will reopen its embassy in Sierra Leone by the end of the year. And I quote, we plan to open new diplomatic missions on the African continent, including Freetown. We expect to do it before the end of this year, Lavrov said, and quote, Kaba said, the reopening of the embassy in Freetown after 32 years will contribute to trust building between Russia and Sierra Leone businessmen. And again, I quote, we have an energy crisis in Sierra Leone today and energy is the lifeblood of any economy and a catalyst for development. Any energy that can help us is welcome. The only thing is that it must be eco-friendly. We welcome Russia's investment in our energy sector. And quote, that was the diplomatic engagements currently as we speak. The updates between Russia and Sierra Leone, the focus is on energy which is very crucial when it comes to um, Sierra Leone's developmental agenda. Right, so away from Russia and Sierra Leone, let's talk about relations between Turkey and Israel. It's getting very hot. Tensions are getting very, very intense. And let's talk about Turkey's decision to suspend trade ties with Israel. The Turkish Trade Ministry said the measures would be in place until Israel allowed an uninterrupted and sufficient flow of aid into Gaza. Trade between the two countries was worth almost $7 billion. Israel's foreign minister accused Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan of acting like a dictator. Israel Kaz said on X that Mr. Erdogan was disregarding the interests of the Turkish people and businessmen and ignoring international trade agreements. He added that he had instructed the foreign ministry to find alternatives for trade with Turkey with a focus on local production and imports from other countries. Now, the ministry also says it will also take action to reduce economic connections between Turkey and the Palestinian Authority and Gaza. Turkish Trade Minister Omar Bulat criticized Israel's uncompromising attitude towards a ceasefire as well as the humanitarian situation in the southern Gaza city of Rafa. Turkey has suspended all exports and imports with Israel until a permanent ceasefire is established and the aid into the Gaza is allowed without any interruption. Well, all too soon. This is where we draw the curtain to today's production. It is always a pleasure to have you on standby, waiting to be updated with the latest in the world of diplomacy and international relations. My name is Harriet Nati. The show is Diplomatic Affairs, and I look forward to seeing you same time next week. Bye-bye.